Hey, I'm Amy with 731woodworks.com, but you can call me Mrs. 731. Today, we are gonna talk about how to stage those woodworking projects so that they sell. Stick around. We're gonna talk about the different backgrounds that you can use for the pieces of furniture that you're trying to sell or the pieces of decorative items that you're trying to sell. We're also gonna talk about some versatile pieces that you can find to help stage those products. The first thing you need to do is consider the project that you're trying to sell. Is it a piece of furniture that primarily belongs in the living room? If so, stage it in a living room background. Is it a piece that primarily belongs in a bedroom? Stage it there. Or if it's something more like our recent farmhouse end table build, you could stage it in multiple places in your house and that way you can show its versatility. But always try to keep in mind what its initial purpose is if it's a versatile piece though, make sure you stage it in different ways. Many of you have asked what I do when it comes to picking out decorative items, where I get them from or what makes me choose that item. There is no exact science behind it. A lot of times I just go out looking for objects that I enjoy that I can use in multiple different ways and then I come home and I try to figure out where I wanna place them. Sometimes I visualize ahead of time what I want and then I go looking for that particular item. Sometimes that works out, sometimes it doesn't. Let's take a look around at our projects. I'll tell you about how I chose those items and how I decided to decorate them. We're also gonna look at some of our previous builds and the way that I've uh, decorated or staged those and I'll tell you why I did it. Hey, whenever you're getting ready to stage a piece of furniture, consider the background that you're putting it in front of. For us, when we got ready to build the coffee bar, I wanted a color that would not just completely fade into the background, but I also wanted something really neutral. If you're staging to sell a piece of furniture, make sure that the piece of furniture does not fade into the room. You want that piece of furniture to stand out on its own, and when they look at that picture of it, they see that piece of furniture before they see anything else. Let's talk about some of the projects that we've built ourselves, that we've staged, that we've put on our Facebook page, that we've advertised with, and why we chose the items that are on it, or the locations, or the, the angles of the picture, because that's just as important when you're staging. Let's start with this outdoor bench that we built. This was an outdoor bench that we actually didn't put a finish on, so it was an unfinished bench. I still wanted it to look like it was ready to be set in, to be enjoyed. So we put a couple of uh, pillows on it, we threw a blanket over it, and then we put books on it with a pair of glasses. Why? Because it invites the potential buyer to come in and sit and relax and read. One of the pillows even says relax. So finding those type of items, those work great because it does look inviting. You want something that your potential buyer is gonna look at and say, wow, I'd really like to sit in that and read a book. Let's talk about those noodle boards. I showed you a noodle board that we're using in our home that's being used in the living room on an end table. Nothing wrong with that. But you also need to show a noodle board sitting on the stove. If you're building these for customers and they're not built to the exact dimensions of your stove, that doesn't mean you can't stage them and take a picture. Just get creative with your camera so that you don't show that it's not fitting your stove. But doing that puts that picture on your profile and it's showing a red noodle board a stained noodle board, a black noodle board, a distressed noodle board. So it shows all of the different options that those come in. Take one of those pictures where it's got the blurry background and put some, you know, put some canisters on it, maybe a rolling pin, a cutting board. I've even taken flour before, sprinkled flour on the noodle board itself with a cutting board showing that the noodle board can get really messy and keep everything else clean. I wanna to talk to you about staging something in a very simplistic way. Sometimes less is more. So we made this sofa table that's got uh, the hairpin legs and a wood top. We didn't want to go overboard with it and so we simply put a couple of things on it, a vase, we put a couple of uh, ceramic rabbits and made the picture a black and white or a monochrome picture and it was perfect, it sold really fast. Now I wanna to talk to you about staging benches. This is a perfect opportunity for you to show how your staging skills have improved. Staging a bench is so much fun. You don't have to stage it as something that you just sit on. We have staged benches to be at the entryway with shoes and things underneath. We've put blankets on top. We've set it against the wall and put pillows on it. We've also set it in front of a couch and stage it, staged it as a mini coffee table. 
it's perfect. It can be used as a footstool. It's so much fun to stage these because there's so many different things that you can do with them. Get in there and have some flair with it. Show some personality. Put baskets underneath it. Uh, if you've got a decorative bench like we have with the arrows on the side, just get in there and mix it up. Put books on top of it, a pair of glasses, a cup of coffee. We like our coffee. Just get in there, have, have a lot of fun with it. Don't restrict yourself by something that you think has to be on it. Put all kinds of things on there and just see how it looks. Take the picture, do some of those blurry background pictures, make it look fantastic and inviting. Boom, there you go. Speaking of fun things to decorate, I love decorating this next thing, the farmhouse console table. Whenever you get ready to decorate it, you do a little decorator dance and then you get going. Uh, no, seriously, I love decorating these because y'all know I've said it before, I love to bake, I love to cook. These are such a fun way to, uh, to, I guess, express things that it can be used for in such a fun way. So we took one, we put my KitchenAid on it. I even put two real, those are real eggs, y'all, in that picture that you're seeing. I put two eggs on it. I put a few uh, canisters on there that had flour and sugar, and I made it look like I was getting ready to bake a cake on that thing. So those are always fun to decorate. You can use them in all different sorts of ways. If you want to decorate one in crafts, you could do that. If you wanted to decorate one for somebody who paints or keeps artist supplies, you could put that sort of thing on it. You can do all kinds of things with these. So get creative and give it a theme. You know what time it is, power tip time. My power tip to you, find a piece of decor that works in every way you can imagine. This one is mine. So if you go back and look at our pictures of previous uh, builds that we've staged and sold, you're gonna see this little dude in a whole lot of it, okay? This I ordered off Etsy several years ago. It took me forever to find one. They hand make them. I love my little deer stag. Mr. 731 kinda jokes with me all the time that he's gonna drop it and break it. But if you go back and look at our pictures, you're going to see this deer head used in so many different ways. We used it on a little uh, table and bar stool set. We staged that in our kitchen area. We put pieces of dishes on that set. We, in the middle of the table, we put, I think, some wood blocks and then we set the deer stag on top. So uh, it can be used even in a kitchen setting. We used it on a coffee table that we staged. We've used it on end tables. We've used it on benches. We have used that deer stag in so many different ways. That's my power tip to you. Don't go out and buy tons of different pieces to decorate with. Find one real good focal point piece that you can use and then look for things that will work with it. That deer stag I actually use on my nightstand in our bedroom. I love that thing. I wish I had a ton of them to put one in every room. Go out, find something like that. The great thing about uh, that particular piece, it's gold. So it's kind of a unique color. You're not usually decorating with, you know, you know, usually you've got the wood stuff and it's not that gold color. So it's a little bit of a contrast. It's also something that fits in with your modern decor. It fits in with the older farmhouse look, the modern farmhouse look. It fits in if it's not farmhouse at all, if it's just, you know, decorating in a different way, uh, maybe a contemporary or modern way you can use it. So it, if you find something like that, those versatile pieces that you can use in so many different ways, that's how you get that bang for the buck because you're not having to go out and buy stuff just for a kitchen uh, staging process or a living room staging process or a bedroom. You can use it, you know, I can use that deer stag in every room in our house. So it's a lot of fun for me. This is our recent build, our coffee bar. This has been one of my most favorite builds that we've ever done. And so I knew when we were planning to build this that I wanted to go shopping for some new pieces to decorate it with. It was a hard job. <laughs> we went to a, a few stores in Little Rock and I tried to find items that were very neutral. I had a hard time finding exactly what I wanted. So I started thinking about things I had around my house and to see if there would be something I could find around my house that might mix with some new stuff. I ended up finding uh, several items. These are great uh, types of items if you're gonna stage furniture with because they can be used in all different rooms. They can be used with all sorts of themes and colors. But we found uh, stuff made of wood. 
that was in different shapes, uh, unusual shapes for wood. These make great decorative pieces because you can just kind of fill up some spaces. These shelves could actually be used for storage. You could stage it that way, but when you're staging furniture, you don't want to make it look like it's um, going to be overpacked. You want to try to make it look like they've got extra room. So things like those are perfect. These spheres, these you can get at Hobby Lobby all day long, really inexpensive. They make great decorative items. Um, they're another unusual shape. The reason that I like to use odd shaped things or things that are not uh, the normal blocks of wood or a normal picture frame is because it gives it more dimension. To me, it just, it makes it look more unique. I also like to stage with texture. This one is metal. There's another one in here that is actually uh, it has a rope, like a jute rope over it. So staging with different textures brings more character into your piece that you're staging. It's always a good idea. Mr. 731 actually found this tray. This was the first thing we bought for the coffee bar. When he found this, because I was struggling in the store. I know it's hard to believe, but you know, a woman was struggling. He found this, he showed it to me. He said, I really like that wood tray, it's different. And I knew I had these cups here, which are all, they all have scripture on them. Uh, stand firm, strength, hope, and faith. So when he found that, I thought, man, those cups would look really striking against that wood. It's got that farmhouse look, which is a little bit of a black running through it. And I knew the cups were white with black lettering. So that was a perfect find. When he found that, then I started looking for things that would work next to it. I knew I had this here. Uh, this is what I keep my coffee pods in and it had that wood texture also, and so and I had this wood basket. And so we went looking for things that would fit. I didn't want every piece in the coffee bar to be monotone or one material. So then we also found these. And something like this works really well when you're staging. It's got a clean look to it. It's got a modern look, but it will also fit in with that farmhouse theme. So that's what you want to do. You want to try to find multiple textures, multiple colors or color schemes that would work together that would complement each other. You don't want a purple basket and then a lime green, you know, picture frame and stuff like that. But you want to put things on it that's going to give it uh, the aesthetic of it something that looks really nice overall when it's done. So don't overpack it. Be very purposeful with the items that you use and try to pick items that you can use in multiple ways. That way, if you're only buying items to stage with, you're not going out spending a ton of money on each project because, I mean, that would be ridiculous, you know. So make sure you're buying items that you can use in multiple different ways. Next, I want to talk to you about using things in an unconventional way. I'm going to show you a few uh, tips and tricks that I use when it comes to decorating, but I want to first talk about my noodle board. Y'all have seen this noodle board in previous videos. I love it. I stopped using it in my kitchen when I broke my arm and then had to have my surgery because it was just, I cook a lot and it was too hard for me to try to move it with one hand. So I want it to still display it some way in my home. I love this noodle board. I was moving my living room furniture around one day and thought, let's just try it on an end table. I set it on the end table. It is a little bit wider than this end table is, but I loved the way it looked. So I decided to throw some decorations on it. This would be a perfect way to stage something. I took a picture that is actually a picture that goes on the wall. It doesn't have a stand on it. And I just leaned it up against a bigger lamp that I've got. I took a bucket that we got free. It was part of a gift basket that I didn't want to just throw away. So I set it on here to throw remotes in. It is a perfect way that you can utilize things in unconventional ways. You can get the most bang for your buck, so to speak, because you can use it all around. So just because you don't have things that you think you can use to decorate a certain project that you're trying to sell, it doesn't necessarily mean that you don't. It just means you got to get a little bit creative. I want to talk to you about this hall tree and how I decorated it because you may be building hall trees. This one was actually built into our house. I've seen a lot of projects where you guys are actually building wall trees that are movable. So you build them and then the customer comes and gets them and sets them in place. But that means you can still decorate it 
uh, when you are staging it to sell. I talked about using all of the things unconventionally. So that's sort of what we did over here. This is a glass bowl out of our kitchen. You can take something like that, sit it on it, throw keys in it. We actually keep that there all the time. That's what our keys are in. This was a, um, a cane that Mr. 731's grandfather used before he passed away. I stuck it up there one day and thought it looked really neat. So now that's where it's at all the time. You can hang a mirror from the, the hooks there. You don't have to just hang coats there or bags or whatever. Hanging a mirror there is a neat way to put that idea in your customer's mind. We like it because it's like you can do one for a woman. You can do one last uh, look or check before you walk out. And then I just took some miscellaneous things and basically piled them on top. We've got a picture that's actually a, a painting I had made of Mr. 731's grandfather's home. So it's almost like this is a little note to him. But you can take different things, mix them together. Again, I've got a basket, I've got wood. It's not a whole lot of texture going on up here. It's not a whole lot of different colors. The uh, There's a little metal decor item up there, a piece of wood, and then the painting. So. I don't, I didn't want too much in it, but you've still got a whole lot of style over here. You've got your pillows, a throw blanket, a mirror, cane, decorative items, and then you're also still showing how it's functional. You know, you've got a place to keep the keys. I would also, if you're gonna, you know, decorate a hall tree to sell, I would hang coats on there and some bags on there also, because you want them to see how it can be used in all those different ways. There's, you know, the underneath storage that you can put shoes in, so lots of different options there, but consider doing things in those unconventional ways. Don't just hang a coat on it, take a picture and let that be it. Show it in all different ways. You know, let them see that they can add some style or some flair to it. Let's talk about our TV stand and the way I chose uh, the, the items to decorate it. The first thing I did after we built this and I saw these two huge open shelves, I thought, okay, great. This is gonna be easy to decorate. Not so much. It took me a minute to figure out what I want it to go on here. I wanna go through my decorations on this to kinda of show you how you can use those things in unconventional ways that I talked about and also how you can mix up those textures. I chose this just because it's a little bit of shine. I like it. I think it gives just a tiny bit of, you know, glitter to the farmhouse. And then I wanted something that had a whole lot of texture that was sort of unique that you wasn't gonna see anywhere else. So I wanted to start putting things together. I actually started with this. This is just a faux skull head that I saw in the store and it's what made me start looking for other items to go with it. I actually love this. Mr. 731 thought it was kind of creepy, but I love it. I don't know why, I just like it. So I tried to figure out the best uh, place to to display something like that. So I actually went to our, uh, it's called the Marketplace. It's an indoor place where vendors come in and set up. So they sell new things, they sell old things. It's almost like an indoor yard sale all the time. And I found all of this except the striped basket. So I wanna show it to you. These I chose because they were different textures. I didn't know what I was gonna use them with, but I liked them, so I grabbed them. There's a set of three. Uh, and you can get these actually at Hobby Lobby. They're very inexpensive. Okay, and this is something that's used to pick up ashes, according to Mr. 731. Didn't know that, good to know. But I chose it just because it was a different texture from the other stuff I had. It's got that rusted look. I thought that was kind of neat. I didn't know what I was gonna put in it. I just grabbed it. I did not get all of this stuff the same day. Another thing I found in there were these old books. These books, you know, you're talking a dollar, two dollars each for some old books. I looked for some that were different colors and I also loved the ones that had the spine kind of torn on them. So I grabbed some of those. These were some newer ones, but I wanted a mixture of them. Now, this basket, you can get these also at places like Hobby Lobby or Home Goods, but I wanted something that I could sit stuff in that was a little bit different. And this had a green color to it. I didn't have anything this color in our house, but I wanted to just kind of add a few more colors. I actually bought this tray at uh, Home Goods in Little Rock, and I bought it to go on our ottoman 
to put stuff in but when I got home I set it down and I had just bought this basket and I set the basket in it only because I wanted to see the basket on the on the TV stand but I didn't want the basket to scratch it when I put it in there I loved it I started gathering up all of the different things I had been shopping for and I tried different things but what I ended up liking was just setting these books inside this so I'm adding more uh, dimension and color and texture I had this I had already found these and I thought you know what those would kind of look neat in there so I threw them in it I tried it different ways I ended up like just sitting it on it and then of course my skull head became my topper and once all of it was put together I loved the way it looked but I thought it looked really neat sitting in there all together it was different it was a lot of different textures a lot of different uh, style all mixed into one and I thought that that you know it worked perfect for what I needed but because I had all of this going on up here I didn't want to make that much go on underneath so I just grabbed a couple of pillows that were different colors different textures and threw them on the bottom I also like keeping blankets on pieces of furniture like this that's a great way that you can stage this sort of thing and then of course if you're staging to sell you do not need to have personal items. This is our personal TV stand. So I've got a picture of Mr. 731 and I on it and then uh, a sign that we had made years ago. But if you are staging this to sell, do not put personal items on it. You wanna make the buyer feel like it's personalized for them and not for you. And then I, at that same flea market store, I went and found a couple of more pieces of metal baskets that I that I liked and some old rusty looking bales and then just a block of wood. So there is no magic science to picking out things. Try to find things that you would think would never work together, would never fit together. Bring them home and start trying to put them together like a puzzle. That's basically what I do. I find a whole lot of different things that I have no clue I'm gonna put with each other and then I come home and I start putting that puzzle together until it feels right. Uh, if you ever have a question about your staging process and you wanna take a picture of it and send it to us, you're welcome to do that and I'll give you feedback. Charlie wanted to be in the video too today. So uh, no matter what it is, when you're staging, I think uh, the main thing you're gonna to have to do is find those pieces that you can use in multiple ways. Don't overthink it, but then put them together in a very strategic way. So make it look inviting. That's the one thing I always try to do when I'm staging something. I don't want it to look cold. I don't want it to look like something that you're not going to want in, to come and sit beside or sit on or sit at and around. Make sure that you're making that furniture look usable. Something that that potential buyer is going to look at and want to have in their home. You know, we don't want to just put something in our house that, you know, we're just sitting in a corner. When we go looking for something, we want to find a piece of furniture or a piece of de uh, decor that's going to be a focal point in our own home. So make sure that you stage it that way. Make sure you, you put time and effort into your staging process. Don't just sit, you know, a vase on one, take a picture. Don't sit a picture frame on one and take a picture. Put a cup of coffee on there with some books and a pair of reading glasses. Put a basket on there with a blanket in it and a throw pillow. Make it look inviting to your potential buyer invite them in to buy your product it not yours so. with 731 woodworks no, i said that wrong <laughs> action snap if you like this video go ahead and hit that box right there it'll take you to the next one you get that big old virtual fist bump like us on facebook and instagram Leave us a comment below. Let us know what you think about this video. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that bell icon so that you get notified of new content. I've had so much fun with you here today. Can't wait till the next one.